And good morning, boys and girls. It's good to see you again this morning. I hope you've had a really great week. And I know that you're all doing well in school because it couldn't go any other way. That uh, you guys are all hard workers, and I know that. I know you're doing well for mom and dad. We've taken a sidetrack from our regular studies of people in the Bible. And we, the last few weeks, we've been talking about the attributes of God. We're going to continue today. We've got about three more that we're going to get into, and then we'll have three more to do for next week. But I want to do a real quick um, re review here. Remember the word attribute. Attribute means a character or quality of a person or, or of something, something of, um, that you have. So that we're talking about the qualities or the characters of God. And I'm going to quickly go over the ones that we've already gone over, and then we'll continue with today's. Remember, number one, God is infinite. He has no beginning. He has no end. He always was, and he always will be. Number two, God never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and he will be the same tomorrow. Number three, God is self-sufficient. He has no need. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't eat, drink. He does nothing that we have that he needs. God is self-sufficient. Number four, God is omnipotent. It means he is all-powerful. His powers are limitless. Number five, God is omniscient. It means he knows everything. He is all-knowing. There's no hiding anything from God. Sometimes we try to hide things from mom or dad. You know, sometimes we like to fool ourselves and hide things from ourselves. God knows everything. You're not hiding a thing from him. Number six, God is omnipresent. It means he is always, boys and girls hear that, always, everywhere. He's always with you no matter where you are. Number seven, God is wise. He is full of perfect, unchanging wisdom. He knows what is best for everybody and everything. Number eight, God is faithful. He, is, he never forgets promise that he has made to us. He never forgets. Number nine, God is good. He is infinitely, unchangingly kind and full of goodwill. Those are the ones we've already done. That's why I just did a quick brief recovery of them. Uh, and then we're going to start today with number 10. And of course, they'll go in a little more depth. Number 10, God is just. God is right and perfect in all he does. In Deuteronomy 32, 4, the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are just, a God of faithfulness and without injustice. He is righteous and upright is he. This simply means that God is fair. He always does what is right and good towards all men and women. Boys and girls are included in that. This is sometimes hard to accept. He sentences evil, unrepenting people to hell. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we get God's mercy. But those who do not accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, well, they get the justice of God. The justice of God is a punishment. Full free will is what we have. We decide. If we're going to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And with that decision comes the consequences. If we decide not to, that's when we're going to feel God's justice. If we do accept Jesus Christ, and I hope all of you do, that means that we get God's, um, the, his righteousness, his just, his, his goodness. Number 11, God is merciful. He is compassionate. And he is kind. In Romans 9, 15 through 16, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy and compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs, but on the God who has mercy. Mercy is undeserved. It is a free gift given to each and every one of us by God. Without God's mercy, we would have no hope of being of heaven. Because we all sin, we all fall short of the glory of God. But because of his mercy, we get life through Jesus Christ. Remember that, life through Jesus Christ. And number 12, 
God is gracious. He is inclined to spare the guilty. Do you remember when we were talking about Ahab and the horrible things that Ahab was doing? And every time Ahab would ask for forgiveness and he would show that he wanted forgiveness, that he was sorry for what he had done, God would give him another chance. And he did that through many of the kings that we've talked about. But when they proved over and over and over, in the end, God is going to have his way. Well, in his graciousness um, that we're talking about now, where he wants to spare the guilty, grace is getting what we don't deserve, eternal life. Grace is God's goodness directed toward human debt. His grace is not something that we can earn, and it's not something we can lose. Once we have it, it's always ours. In Exodus 33, 19, his grace is also sovereign. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And in Matthew 5, 45, it tells us, For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. While all people benefit from uncommon grace, well, excuse me, for, from common grace, only those who profess and put their faith in Christ Jesus receives saving grace. There's a big difference. Common grace, like I said, the rain that comes down on the just, it falls on the unjust at the same time. The sun rises on all of us. We all benefit from that from God. But only those who put their faith in Christ Jesus as their Savior are going to receive a saving grace. We are going to stop here for today, and we were going to finish up next week with 13, 14, and 15. Boys and girls, I want you to hear a message very clearly. There is only one way to God. I know in this world today, everybody likes to say all religions point to God. There's many different spokes in this wheel. There's one way to God, and God gave us that way, and it is his son, Jesus Christ. It's in when we know Jesus in our hearts and in our minds, accept him as our Lord and Savior, then you will know, you will see, and you will feel everything that God has in store for you. His mercy and grace. They run free, and you, it, it's all there for you to take. It's all free. All you have to do is accept Christ, believe he is your Savior, confess your sins, and turn away from it. Sounds kind of simple. Then why is it so hard for us to do? Boys and girls, just open your hearts. Open your hearts to him. Let him talk to you. But take the time to silence yourself so that you can listen to what God is telling you. <coughs> Excuse me. I love you. I miss you. I'm going to take a moment to pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, so thankful that you have given us your son, Jesus Christ, to guide us towards you. That, Lord, in the end, in the end, it is heaven that you have gone to and made many houses for us, many mansions for us. But Lord, that we will know your love, we will know your, your, the warmth of having you around us. Lord, I pray for all those who haven't accepted Jesus as their Savior, as their Savior. Lord, I pray for all these children. I pray for everybody that this COVID is over soon, and that we can get back to normal. And Lord, that we can all meet together in your house. Lord, we thank you, we love you, and thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. In his name we do pray. Amen. Well, I miss you. I hope to see you all very soon. Remember, we're doing Children's Church on the second and fourth Sundays at 10 o'clock at church while the sermon is going on. And I hope to see you all very soon. I love you. And have a good day.